In just one night, more than 1,500 people died. A horrific night of unspeakable misfortune. The luxury British steamship, ineptly named the Titanic, sank deep into the ocean during the early hours of April 15, 1912, after hitting an enormous iceberg. Of the 2,240 crew members and passengers on board, the majority did not survive. While it would be easy to recall the ghastly and appalling stories that took place throughout that night, something else came of it that is a story meant for the ages. While fear took hold of the people who knew their inevitable outcome, Eight musicians chose to become heroes that night. While there were also crew, hero engineers that remained at their post, making sure the light stayed on as long as possible, their story will be saved for another time. Wallace Hartley, age 33, bandmaster and violinist. Theodore Ronald Braley, age 24, pianist. Roger Brochot, age 20, cellist. John Frederick Preston Clark, age 30, bassist. John Law Hume, age 21, violinist George Alexander Krenz age 23 violinist Percy Cornelius Taylor age 32 cellist and John Wesley Woodward age 32 cellist so young and yet forever heroes they died at their post of duty. You see, as these young musicians climbed aboard the Titanic, like all the passengers, they felt sure they knew nothing to fear. Touted as practically unsinkable, the Titanic was a miraculous piece of machinery indeed. The Titanic was the product of intense competition among top rival shipping lines. White Star Line was aiming for supreme primacy against Cunyard, a British line with two ships that held rank as the most luxurious and sophisticated of their time. On May 31st, 1911, the hull of the ship was unveiled as the largest movable man-made object in the world at that time. The launching, which took just over a minute, was witnessed by more than 100,000 people and went off without a hitch. It was immediately towed to an enormous dock where thousands of workers would then spend the better of the year installing 29 giant boilers, building the ship's decks, and constructing the breakthrough interiors. Although the Titanic could carry up to 3,300 passengers, there were just 16 lifeboats and four collapsible boats that could hold 1,178 people. However, the supply exceeded the British Board of Trade's requirements for that time. On April 10, 1912, the Titanic created a magnificent sight as it departed on its maiden voyage to New York with its 2,240 souls on board. As befitting the world's most celebrated ship, many of those souls were wealthy dignitaries, high-ranking officials, and celebrities. J. Bruce Ismay, White Star's managing director 
and Thomas Andrews, the ship's builder from Harland, and Wolf were first amongst those. Interestingly, J.P. Morgan, the ship's financier, canceled at the last minute due to a business delay. Second class passengers included academics, journalists, and tourists who would enjoy the level of service equivalent to first class on any other ship. But the largest group of passengers, with more than 700 souls, were the third class. Some had paid less than $20 to cross the ocean. So when the Titanic first embarked, a few mishaps were later seen as foreboding the demise that would eventually unfold. First, a small coal fire broke out in one of the bunkers. However, this was not an uncommon occurrence on steamboats at that time. After assessing the situation, it was decided by the captain and chief engineer that the fire had not caused any damage that could affect the hull structure. The stokers were ordered to continue hosing down the smoldering coals and controlling the fire at sea. Some believe the fire became uncontrollable, forcing the crew to attempt to cross the ocean full speed, thereby unable to avoid the fatal collision with the iceberg. Another unsettling event occurred the first day as well when the Titanic first left the dock. In a near miss with the America Lines SS New York, as she got underway, many pointed to this as a bad omen for a ship maiden voyage. However, four days, passengers enjoyed the uneventful sailing while enjoying the luxurious ship, dining on rich foods, enjoying breathtaking views, and listening to the magnificent musicians from the Wallace Hartley's orchestra. The orchestra were all members of the Amalgamated British Musicians Union, employed by the Liverpool Music Agency, which supplied the musicians for the White Star Line, as well as the Cunier Line. The players performed as two separate groups during tea time, after dinner concerts, and Sunday services. However, trouble was afoot as reports of large blocks of ice came in from other ships. But the ship continued to sail on calm seas under a moonless and clear night. On April 14th, the Titanic struck an iceberg. A lookout saw the iceberg dead ahead around 11.30 p.m., you see. The iceberg came suddenly out of a slight gaze and he quickly rang the warning bell and he called the bridge. The engineers worked quickly to reverse the ship and turn sharply. Instead of hitting the iceberg dead on, the Titanic grazed the iceberg, spewing ice fragments on the front deck. Believing they had avoided the iceberg, the lookouts were relieved. They had no idea that below the ocean, the iceberg had a jagged edge that hit the ship below waterline, leaving a 300-foot gash in the hull. The captain and the ship's designer, Thomas Andrews, surveyed the damage. Within a short time, five compartments were already full of salt water and the bow of the ship was at an alarming angle, allowing seawater to quickly move from one bulkhead into the adjacent compartment. Doing a quick calculation, Andrews realized with dread that the ship would sink, and he estimated that the Titanic might remain afloat for about an hour and a half only. 
The captain immediately instructed the wireless operator to call for help and ordered lifeboats to be loaded. A little more than an hour after hitting the iceberg, in the midst of a cacophony of chaos and disorder, the first lifeboat was lowered with only 28 of the 65 capacity on board. This became the tragic norm as boat after boat was lowered, woefully underfilled, some with just a handful of souls. According to the law of the sea, Women and children were to board first. Once finished, men were permitted to board the remaining lifeboats. However, history tells another story. As many victims were women and children, and many men survived. The Titanic exceeded Andrew's prediction, staying afloat for close to three hours. It was those three hours left that witnessed acts of gutless cowardice in conjunction with extraordinary bravery. According to the History Channel, hundreds of human dramas unfolded between the order to load the lifeboats and the ship's final plunge. Men saw off wives and children Families were separated in the confusion, and selfless individuals gave up their spots to remain with loved ones, or allow a mere vulnerable passenger to escape. In the end, 705 people survived the sinking of the Titanic. One such story was that of eight men, who knowing the fate that lay forth before them, decided to become heroes on that fateful night. Deciding to squelch their own fears, they set about to play, all together as one. Playing their sweet melody, intended to calm passengers for as long as they could. To make a decision such as this requires one to look deep, yes, deep within to find the courage that dwells in all of our souls. That is where they found their own David, overcoming the Goliath of fear and chaos. As the freezing water covered their feet, they maintained their attention to making the most of their lives with the intensity of an eagle setting its sight on a mouse in the field Intent to live their last moments with integrity, compassion, and bravery. They played, they continued to play even as the ice cold water advanced. You see, although the Titanic was nearly perpendicular, many of the lights were still aglow. But at 2 20 a.m. on April 15th, 1912, she finally dove beneath the ocean surface. After receiving distress calls, the Cunyard's Capita drove at full speed, dodging ice flows, rounded up all the lifeboats, but ultimately only saved 705 survivors. According to one of the survivors, many brave things were done that night. But none more, none more brave than those done by men playing minute after minute as the ship sailed quietly lower and lower in the sea. The music they played served alike as their own immortal requiem and their right to be recalled on the scrolls of undying fame. You see, despite our hubris, as a human race, and confidence in science and technology, this story shows our ability to nature. But even in the face of death, or perceived death, a choice still remains to how one should choose to live. Will you find your David within? Find 
that hero that can be rock in times of desperation, such as our eight musicians? Or will you disappear in the chaos? While it may appear that our musicians lost to the Goliath of tragedy, their souls and courage will live on forever and forever. Always as a beacon of true courage and heroism, they found their David within, and now their souls live on forever as a testament to the urgency of courage. During the times of Saul, Goliath, a monster, terrorized the people of Israel until the youngest son of Jesse, named David, convinced Saul, the ruler, to take on Goliath. David's determination, faith, and courage helped him to slay the dragon Goliath. Today, we gather forces around the uncommon passion for courage. Courage to devour the Goliath that threatens our destiny and our lives. We challenge you to discover the David within that will smash and crumble that beast to the ground.